Mr. McBride, you claim there was no iceberg, no proof there was one anywhere near the Titanic that night. Well, what about the lookout? He didn't see it. Did anybody else? But there's a photograph of an iceberg near the site of the sinking next day. Is there? It had a long red streak of paint on the side. Did it? In a black and white photo? The man who took it said it was red. Did he sell that we snapped for a lot of money? Wouldn't take much to fake it, would it? The Titanic was sunk by an iceberg. Everybody knows that. I said her keel wasn't sound. I said her hull was badly weakened by a fire. Those two things were enough to sink her in the roughest part of the roughest ocean in the world. I said nothing about an ice cube, no matter how big. Whatever you and the rest of the world believes, pal, 401 didn't hit an iceberg. Who's there? It's me, Nick Danny, Danny Gunther. Can you open the door? I don't hear from you for two days, and now you try to force your way into my hotel room in the middle of the night. I need to talk to you urgently. In the morning. Go away. It's important. It's something I found out about the ship your fiancé was on. About the Titanic. You can stay in the corridor and speak. <sighs> Go to the window. Look into the street. You'll see a man opposite, trying to keep in a shadow. What? Do what I say, please. Oh. You see him? There is someone there. Yes. He followed me here. He's a Pinkerton's man. A what? Pinkerton's is a private force of detectives. He's been following me ever since I started asking questions on your behalf. <sighs> nice little room. Well, you stay that side of it, with the bed between us. <laughs> Don't worry. My days of chasing attractive young women around hotel rooms are over. Especially when they're holding a heavy cut glass ashtray behind their back. <sighs> it will still be in reach, Mr. Gunter. Call me Danny. No. You're a tough cookie, Emma. Miss Hayer, to you. <sighs> I'm gonna splash some water on my face from that jug on the bedside table. It's been a long couple of days. <sighs> Start packing your bags. You're leaving here tonight. <laughs> Why would you even begin to think I might agree to do that? Because asking the kind of questions you got me to ask about that ship makes you really serious enemies. Rich, powerful, and connected people you really don't want to get on the wrong side of. Okay, here we go. The Titanic should never have gone to sea. The design of the keel was all wrong, and there was a fire burning in the stokehold, which weakened the hull. Despite that, they went ahead with the maiden voyage, putting all those lives at risk. They wouldn't have done that. They were going to leave Lord Ismay's seven and a half million pound investment sitting there at the dock? You think he wouldn't have taken the gamble? Remember that he somehow managed to get into one of the lifeboats. No going down with the jolly old ship for him. His lordship had a flying start, almost as if he suspected the voyage might not end well. He couldn't have known it was going to hit the iceberg. An iceberg that came out of nowhere, sank an unsinkable ship, and disappeared again. The lookout never saw it. Other people said there was an iceberg. The survivors? They're shocked, confused, cold, wet. They've lost everything, including those they loved. Tell them an iceberg was responsible. Are they going to argue? There was no iceberg? Sure. In newspaper accounts, it makes a great story. It also gets Ismay and his buddies off the hook. It shifts the blame to Mother Nature. Then that means... It means it's possible that your fiancé and 1,500 other people were murdered. <gasps> Who's there? Hey, relax. I've been making some plans to keep you safe. Am I in danger? I've only told you half the story. Come on in. This is an old buddy of mine who works hotel security here. What a Santa, senora. He's arranged for a cab to be waiting back at the kitchens to take you to a new place to stay. I can't leave here in the middle of the night. Pack your bags now, if you want to hear the rest of what I know.
I did somebody a favor a couple of years back. I kept his name out of a story about a stock kiting scheme. He's in an even bigger racket now, insurance. He said the North Atlantic is like his first wife. He always knew where he stood with her because she was always in a bad mood. Which is why Harlan and Wolf built some of the best ships in the world. They know that ocean. So why was it so hard to get this one insured? Nobody wanted to touch it. It was like everybody knew something was wrong. After he wised me up, the guy told me we never had the conversation. Then he ran for the door, leaving a Delmonico steak on his plate. Believe me, nobody does that. This is it, Cabby. Get off here. Oh. There's no hotel here. It's ten blocks away. I want to make sure we shook off my tail. This is a temperance hotel. Inexpensive, well-run, and discreet. A lot of single ladies stay here. You'll be okay. I want you to stay inside while I keep investigating. You don't think you're being a little too... well, dramatic, Mr. Gunter? Men following you? A new hotel in the middle of the night? This is New York. Things happen here. Sometimes very bad things. I love my country, but we got a long way to go before we're really civilized. I'm in your hands. All I can do is trust you. Here's another thin, was it? You don't have to give me that. I'd like to keep this professional. Especially as you're making a habit of being in hotel rooms with me. I'm not a grifter. I want you to know that. I'm sure you're not. Whatever a grifter is. One thing I always had was a nose for a story. Stay calm, but stay here. Don't even use the coffee shop at a restaurant. Order room service. I'll be back as soon as I can. Excuse me, can I help you? Um, do you have back copies of the newspaper here? How far back? About six months. Uh, you'll need the morgue. The morgue? Mm -hmm. That's where we keep the back numbers, along that corridor. March and April, 1911. You can adjust the reading lamp. I'll be over there if you need anything else. Uh, no chewing gum, and be careful with the pages. Thank you. Mm-hmm. What do you mean she's not here? Miss Hayer left early this morning. She checked out, or is she coming back? Of course I intended to come back, Mr. Gunter. Where have you been? Oh, listen, if you two lovebirds are going to have a fight, can you do it in private? Why don't we sit in the coffee room? It's almost empty. I need... What is that very strong coffee you all seem to drink here? Espresso. Ah. Two espressos, double shots. My goodness, how small they are. What's that on the side? That's lemon peel. Oh, my. <laughs> Have one of those. They're biscotti. Looks like dried out bread. It is, but it's layered with almonds. Mmm, it's delicious. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to talk for a little bit now, Mr. Gunter. Uh. And I don't want you to interrupt. I left my room because I still wasn't totally convinced you weren't a, a grifter. Is that the word? Or a fantasist. That you weren't out to take advantage of me or were suffering from some kind of delusion. I told Let you. Let me say it all. I decided to teach myself everything about that voyage. Now that meant going to newspaper offices. I've been to four of them today, straining my eyes, reading about the launch and the sinking. I went through the lists of passengers who died. Mostly they printed names of the famous ones. John Jacob Astor, Benjamin Guggenheim, Broadway producers and financiers and multimillionaires who own railroads and iron and steel companies. Actresses, famous writers, composers who might have died hearing my fiancé play. He'd have been with them in their last moments, given them a final kindness through his music. Can I use that? Then I came across lists of those who hadn't been on the ship, 
but might have been. Some cancelled at the last moment. Some just didn't arrive in time to embark. Marconi, whose wireless system was supposed to prevent disasters like that, he left Europe on another ship three days previously. Hmm. J.P. Point Morgan. The Napoleon of Wall Street. Who was actually at the launch, but chose not to go on the voyage. Henry Clay Frick. One of Morgan's cronies, and just as rich and powerful. Alfred Vanderbilt. I thought he died. He cancelled so late his name was on the list of the missing. There are more of them. They were either born under a lucky star, the white starline star perhaps, or knew the ship might sink whether it hit an iceberg or not. Which means that my fiancé and the others didn't die because of an act of God, but because of the wickedness of man. Hmm. This is your first trip to New York. It's my first trip anywhere, really. So, you've never seen the Brooklyn Bridge? Pretty impressive, that bridge, yeah? Halfway through building it, they discovered the cables were cheap iron and not steel. If it falls down one day, that'll be the reason. There's always somebody working an angle, I guess. Why should the firm who built the Titanic be any different? Or the money guys behind it? Or the politician they pay off? Where are we going? We're going to Red Hook to meet William McBride, who also lost someone in the wreck, his brother. Then I'm taking you to a newspaper editor. It's time the public knew what we know. Can we stop for a moment? Are you OK? That's uh, Staten Island over there, yes? Sure. So that must be Bayonne and the Narrows. I thought this was your first time in New York. I'm a teacher. I can look at a map. Huh. That's the Atlantic Ocean just down there, then. So, Harold would have come past here. Past Governor's Island, to the Hudson, and then the pier. Oh. Hey, take a breath. No, we shouldn't hang around here. It's a bad neighborhood. Better hold your nose. This isn't the lower depths, it's the cellar underneath it. Can I help you, buddy? Miss? If it's a room for two, the honeymoon suite is taken. I'm a reporter. Oh, yeah, it's you again. I didn't like your face first time I seen it. We're here to see someone who's staying here. An Irishman. William McBride? McBride. McBride. Ah, McBride. Moved out. Permanent. Have you any idea where he is now? Sure. They dragged him out of the water by Pier 44, and the cops took him to the corner in the meat wagon this morning. You two bubs break it up, or I'll sling you out on your ear. McBride's dead? I told you, he moved out permanent. Just after you came snooping around here yesterday. 